In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at how to factor the sum or difference of two cubes. Um, we'll do about three examples and we'll take a look at the formula with a nice little acronym to help you remember how to place your signs. These are your formulas for either the sum or the difference of two perfect cubes. A to the third and B to the third is showing that you would have two perfect cubes. Those are showing perfect cubes. All right, now they factor into an A plus a B times the quantity A squared minus AB plus B squared. And when it's a difference of two cubes, then it factors into A minus B times the quantity a squared plus a b plus a b squared. Now if I've got an a cubed here, this a right here is the cube root of the a to the third. So that's the correlation in the formula between those two values. You would take then the cube root and square it. You would take the cube root of both of them and multiply here. You would take the cube root here and then square it. Now how you can remember how the signs go is by using a mnemonic called SOAP. All right, It's a SOAP method for your signs. In the original problem, if it is a minus, then the first sign is the same, that's the S in soap. The next sign is opposite, O for soap. The last one is always positive. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether you're doing the difference of two cubes or the sum of two cubes, you can follow this acronym. Here's my original sign, which is a plus. I need the first one to be the same. I need the next one to be the opposite sign, and then I need the last one to be always positive. So it's a nice little acronym for remembering how to place your signs. Okay, now, right here, I've got a, a minus sign, so this is going to be the difference of two perfect cubes, possibly if both of these are perfect square, uh, cubes, and they are. I can take the cube root of an x to the third and get an x. I can take the cube root of 8 and get a 2. All right, so in other words, this would be my a value because it's the cube root of the first term, and 2 would be my b value because it's the cube root of the 8. Now let's go ahead and write the formula down so that we can plug it in here initially. All right, I've got an a minus b. All right, then I'm going to have an a squared opposite, so it would be plus times a b, and then always positive plus b squared. Okay, now from there, I know my a is x and I know my b is 2. So this is going to be an x minus 2. And then x squared, a squared is just going to be my x squared, plus 2 times the x will be a 2x, and then b squared, 2 squared. All right, and sometimes you can do that in your head, sometimes you can't. On this one, I went ahead and wrote it in like that so that we can multiply it out. So final answer would be x minus 2 times the quantity x squared plus 2x plus a 4. That one was a pretty simple one, straightforward. In, um, the cube roots were not too difficult and the squaring there on both of those were not very difficult as well. Now if we do two more examples. Alright, in this first one, all right, I have a sum and looking at both of these, I have perfect cube roots. All right, so let's do the cube root of an x to the sixth. All right, that's going to give us an x to the third. You can just take six, um, half of your exponent when it's even there. Oh, wait, that's going to be an x squared. Sorry, you cannot do that. You can take six divided by the three. It's going to give you that x squared. There we go. Now, cube root of the 64y to the third. Cube root of 64 is going to give me a 4. The cube root of that y to the third is going to give me a y. So I have an x squared and a 4y that's going to be my a and b. All right, let's go ahead and write the formula down underneath first. I'll have an a plus a b and then an a squared opposite sign, so minus a times b, always positive, plus my b squared. All right, now on this one, I'm actually going to show each of these things being squared so that we don't have to necessarily do it in our head. a plus b to begin with, so an x squared plus a 4y. And then squaring my a, I've got an x squared, and I want to square it. Minus a times b, so 4 
x squared y plus, now I'm going to take the b and square it, so a 4y and then square it. This lets you see what's being squared a little bit more so you're less likely to make a mistake right there. So I'm going to have an x squared plus a 4y. Power raised to a power here will give me an x to the fourth. That's already multiplied together for x squared y. Now when I square this, I've got to remember to square the y and to square the 4, which will then give me a 16y squared as a final answer there. Okay, now on this last example, all right, I look at these as it sits right there, and it's going to make the problem easier if I go ahead and take out a greatest common factor if I have one. And in this case, 8 goes into 8. 8 also goes into 216. You always want to take out a greatest common factor first if you can. Okay, so on this one, I have a greatest common factor, and that equals 8. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to take out the 8. 8 divided by 8 will give me a 1 here, and then minus a 27 x to the third, y to the third. And if you don't take that uh, greatest common factor out at the beginning and you don't catch it at the end, then whatever you have factored, you will not have factored completely. All right, now the 8 here on the outside is just going to stay all the way down in front. Um, I'm going to apply my difference of two cubes here on the inside. So cube root of 1 is going to be a 1. And then the cube root of that 27x to the third, y to the third, is just going to be a 3. Cube root of 27 is 3, and then an x and a y. So there are my two perfect cubes. All right, now let's go ahead and one more time write the formula down. Um, I will have the a minus b, it's always the same, and then a squared opposite, so I'll go to a plus. A times B, always positive, B squared. All right, now as I work out this formula, that 8 has to stay out in front. So I'm going to keep the 8 out in front. Then I'm going to start my formula A minus B. So I'm going to have a 1 minus a 3XY. And then showing everything here, let's see, 1 squared is just going to be 1. Plus multiplying those two things, I'm just going to have the 3XY. And then squaring this, let's go ahead and show it as that being squared. So a 3xy quantity squared. All right, so maybe you're going to be able to square that in your head and write it right down. If not, write it like this and put an extra step in. 8 times the quantity of 1 minus 3xy times the quantity 1 plus 3xy. Now, squaring everything in there, 3 times 3 is going to give me a 9. And then an x squared y squared. All right, so there are four examples of how you might factor the sum or difference of two cubes along with an acronym of SOAP to help you remember how those signs are to be placed in the formulas. Definitely thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.